What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Tonight, we're going to be going over a Christian apologist, a popular Christian apologist, by the way. There's no way that you can say that this is bottom of the barrel type shit here on YouTube because this Christian apologist has over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, you know, his arguments have got to be spot on. Tonight, we're covering Mike Winger again, and he's going to be elaborating on why God allows children to get cancer. So there's no way that this can backfire on him. There's no way that any of this can really be bad for him. There's only going to be good things, obviously. So if you heathens want to fuck around and find out how Mike Winger squares up ca uh, children that have cancer with his particular omnibenevolent, omniscient, all-powerful God, then please stay tuned. <laughs> All right, heathens. Well, tonight we're going to be going over Mike Winger discussing why God allows children to get cancer. And it's a very interesting question because what we're really trying to get to is why does God allow suffering? That's an important question, primarily because if God is omnibenevolent, like Mike Winger believes, and he's omniscient, like Mike Winger believes, and all powerful, like Mike Winger believes, then cancer in children really shouldn't exist. Like, I have no idea why that would be the best solution for any child. You, if, if God can't come up with a better solution than to give somebody cancer, like, you know, Mike Winger would, would obviously believe, you know, I feel like he's not all knowing, or at least he uh, can't think of a better solution for whatever fucking plan he has. So it seems to me like it's a very important question to ask, considering the claims of Christianity. I, I, I feel like you've got to answer one of two ways. You can answer in a way that shows that you're better than your own God. Or you can answer in a way that sounds a lot like you're just giving God carte blanche to do whatever and you're still going to naive you, naively believe that he's an all good, all powerful, all knowing God. I feel like those are the only two ways that you could go about it. Unless you just say, I don't know. I guess that would technically be the third way. I don't know. Kind of, kind of deal. But anyways, let's see how Mike Winger answers this particular question. Number 15, Gabriel C says, why does God allow children to get cancer and other terminal illnesses? Um, Gabriel, this is challenging for a number of reasons. Um, oh, yeah, a no, a definitely a number of reasons, um, uh, including theological ones. I feel like theologically, it's a it, the question's a problem because if God, like I said, is, uh, is is an omnibenevolent God, then it would seem like you wouldn't allow children to get cancer. What has a child done exactly that would make them deserving of cancer? Now, on a naturalistic perspective, Cancer is expected to happen because nature doesn't give two shits about anything in nature. Anything that exists, it doesn't give any two shits. It's amoral is my point here. Nature is amoral. It doesn't have a sense of morality. It doesn't have any kind of uh, a sentience or anything like that. Nature just operates. And under that idea, cancer in any uh, living creature, uh, no matter how old uh, it is or how young it is, cancer is a genetic mistake. Like it's a, it's a mistake in your, in your cells. It's a mistake in your genes sometimes like in, in genetic illnesses, obviously, and other terminal illnesses are what we would classify as mistakes. I feel like on a naturalistic perspective, this is easily explainable. But on the whole idea of an all-powerful, all-good, all-knowing God, there's a problem. But I want to challenge you a little bit as well. So I don't know why um, God allows children to get terminal cancer and other illnesses. And if if it was just, if you just asked me, Mike, you going to snap your fingers and stop all that from happening? I, I would probably do it in a heartbeat. 28 seconds. It only took Mike Winger 28 seconds to demonstrate that he is better than his own God. Because if Mike was God and he saw a child with cancer, he could snap his fingers and take that cancer away. And guess what God doesn't do if he exists out there? If, if he does exist, God chooses not to do that. And so that makes Mike and any Christian that thinks like him so much better than his own concept of God. So so this puts us in a frustrating situation. God, you're running the world in a way and in some ways that are infuriating to us in our and, and it hurts our hearts 
and even just hearing about it, let alone being a family who's experiencing it. I know Christians who've gone through these kinds of situations and it's beyond words, the kind of, the kind of suffering and the kind of pain and the kind of, um, just tiredness, um, of, of, of everything and all the stuff it's beyond words. I agree. It is beyond words. And uh, I think that it's it's a horrible thing that happens. But again, on a naturalistic worldview where God isn't a factor, where there's nobody there to snap their fingers and magically cure people of cancer, uh, you know, that kind of thing happening, suffering happening is is well understood that that is just a fact of reality, that suffering exists and there's there's nearly nothing that we can do to prevent suffering from existing. It will always exist. And I, I feel like introducing a God that could conceivably stop all suffering with a snap of a Thanos snap of his fingers. I, I think that that gives you a lot of problems. Like there's a lot of problems in inserting that kind of idea into our reality because then you have to answer well why doesn't he do that why does he allow suffering why does he allow these horrible things to happen it, it would seem that in the bible if you're pious if you um praise god and do everything right by god do everything that god asks of you you should be rewarded for that by that god because i mean that's what it says in the bible of course the bible is contradictory things where it says even uh, i believe it was in job that we read this but even good people suffer so it, it kind of seems to me if the Bible is to be taken to be representative of reality, then doing everything right for God should mean that, you know, you're you're not struck with illness, that you are prosperous, because that is the message that God communicates through his book. But here's the challenge. I'll push back a little bit and I'll say. When we ask God, why are you doing this or why aren't you doing that? We are potentially putting ourselves into a place of, of lack of self-awareness where I don't recognize that I'm just a human living in this world. I'm this tiny speck of a being trying to challenge how God is running his universe. This is a humility that we desperately need. I mean, it will save us from falling into horrible de deception because we, it's, Anyone can look around and add up the horrific things they see happening in the world and conclude that either God doesn't exist or I don't like him. Well, yeah, I mean, I would think that that would be an easy math equation to do. Like, you know, uh, 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 Sally got cancer at the age of three and then she died at the age of three and a half. Like, uh, like what was the point in, in that, God? And so, I mean, it's either God's a dick or he doesn't exist. And I feel like if you go with, oh, well, that particular concept of God doesn't exist. Like this whole concept of God being all powerful, all knowing, omniscient, uh, omnibenevolent. I feel like it has to go out the window for you and you have to actually uh, you have to figure out a different way to believe in God, or I guess go back a little bit, try to figure out whether or not this God does exist. And I feel like that's a perfectly reasonable path to take. And uh, what Mike is essentially doing here is saying, well, while I would stop cancer in its tracks, I'm not God. And I can't know why God would allow this. So me saying that I know better than God is something that will definitely get lightning shoved up my asshole. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I feel like is, is essentially what he's saying here. And I feel like if God can't do the very basics of what we consider uh, dignity, like if he can't, if he can't exhibit like dignity on a very basic level uh, in that way, then maybe we're better than that definition of God. If you find yourself saying, oh, this is bad, it shouldn't happen, why is God allowing this? Then I think you've already shown that you're better than your concept of God. And you need to figure something else out. Because I, I really hate this whole idea that I'm not God, so therefore I can't criticize God's decisions. I can definitely criticize God's decisions. I know what decisions I would make. I know that I wouldn't want somebody to have cancer. And if I could solve that, I would. And I don't consider myself omnibenevolent in the least bit, but I seem to be a, a bit closer to omnibenevolence than the Abrahamic God because I wouldn't allow that. Anyone can do that if they feel like they have the place 
to make the proper judgment. So let me give you um, an example. Me and my wife like walk, watching cooking shows. And we were watching Iron Chef, which I think is a real fun cooking show. And um, we're watching this show. And one of the complaints about Iron Chef was, I don't, I don't think it's still running. Or maybe it is. I don't know. We're watching reruns. And uh, one of the complaints about the show was that the judges, you have these incredible chefs cooking, but frequently the judges, it'll be like one or maybe two real food critics who know food and then it'll be like an actor or like a producer like some random famous person and they'll look at the food and they'll and they'll judge it poorly now the chefs are incredibly skilled and they make it really well and then i've i've seen people look at the food and they go oh well that's just it's just kind of weird to me you know it just kind of tastes strange to me like i haven't had that before and i i don't know what's this sauce called again <laughs> you know and and they're ju- the thing is they're judging. And this is what struck a lot of people as odd with the show is that they have these famous people for ratings who are judging expert chefs to see who is the best expert chef in this scenario. Um, I don't blame the famous person for saying yes to go on the show and have a, lot, have a good time. But the producers of the show should have known better. Like somebody should have been like, hey, you are, you are not in a in a place where you're informed enough to make a proper judgment about this issue. And so what I'm going to suggest is human, you, when you, when you about me too, when I evaluate and look at the world, I'm not in a place to make an informed and right judgment on God, on how he's running things. Not in my knowledge. I don't know enough, not in my wisdom. I don't understand things well enough, even the things I do know, right. And not in my perspective because I'm looking at it from this moment. And I can't tell you how many times in life I've grown out of a difficult season and I look back at it so differently. Uh, sorry, I've let him go on for a little bit here. And I feel like this is it's sort of sort of like an argument from ignorance, except he's he's attesting, well, I'm ignorant of this, therefore I can't judge it. But, you know, the the problem is that. He's assuming that that there is a good reason, like like pre, he's presuming, he's presuming that there is good reason for a child to have cancer at this point. He he's claiming that he doesn't know the reason and he can't fathom the reason, but somehow he knows that that God has given a child cancer for a good reason. Except he's not explicitly saying that. He's sort of he's like tiptoeing. He's tiptoeing around that particular answer. He doesn't want to step on it and say that answer, right? He doesn't want to do that. He wants to tiptoe around it. He he just, he doesn't actually want to say, well, there's a good reason for a child to have cancer. I just don't know what that is. But he's proposing it in a way that makes, I, I guess, is a little detrimental to him saying, well, I'm just ignorant. I'm a lowly human. I don't know why God would do this, but... And this is something, but something that I learned from my own therapist and in my own struggles with trying to know whether or not, like, I'm being a good parent to Xander. And I, I something that I still struggle with. Um, but, you know, they would tell me, you know what you would and wouldn't do for your own son. I, I know that it would be a bad thing for me to, you know, whip Xander with a belt. Like, at least uh, in my own view, hitting Xander with some foreign object is just not something that I would ever do. Or, you know, uh, berate my son uh, into into feeling like shit or something like that. Like, I would not do that to my son. And so in order to relate whether or not, like, you know, what I experienced as a child was good or bad, my therapist told me, well... You know, would you do that to your son? Would you do this to your son? And if I said, I know what I would and wouldn't do and the reasons why. And so using that, I can judge how my parents treated me. You know, I can I can judge as to whether or not, you know, my 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 parents were good parents or not, or whether I deserve to be treated like that. And I feel like this can be uh, transposed onto this situation because Mike thinks of his God as a parent. If you're sitting there saying, I would not do this to my child or to my family or anything like that. Like if I could take that away from them and not and have them not experience that I would. But then your parent, as he would relate to God, um, my parent he does do that, then I feel like you have the answer to your question as to whether or not that parent is a good parent. And at least on your own, your own experiences on, on your own, 
um, subjective view of things, I think that you can definitely compare and contrast and determine whether or not that God is omnibenevolent. I don't think that you have to know everything in the universe in order to understand that a child with cancer simply cannot be the best solution to anything. And if you're all knowing about everything, don't you think that you could come up with a better way to do whatever you needed to do, have whatever plan that needed to happen and have it occur like that? Like have it occur in a different way? Don't you think that somebody that is all knowing and omniscient and everything like that would be able to do that? If he's not, then he's not omniscient. When I was in the middle, all I wanted was out of it. But I look back and some of those seasons, I wouldn't, I would, I'm glad I went through it, even though it was horrific at the time. It's hard for me to hear myself say that because I've been through some stuff, right? And you have too. Have you? I mean, I don't know what Mike Winger's past has been like, but when, whenever somebody says that, I'm like, well, shit, what have you been through? <laughs> because, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I've been through some shit. I mean, I've had some experiences, but I wouldn't be like, you know, man, I've been through some shit and then take a long drag on a cigarette. <laughs> I'm kind of curious what Mike Winger is. I mean, of course, that's his own personal thing. I, uh, unlike so many Republicans, believe in privacy. My own curiosity is kind of piqued about this with Mike going through so much shit. So I hate that he had to go through that shit. And I know that I'm better than the Abrahamic God, because if I could snap my fingers and Mike wouldn't have gone through that shit, even though I'm not exactly a Mike fan at all, I would still opt for anybody not to have to go through whatever kind of shit that Mike has had to go through. Some of that stuff I look back and I go, gosh, if I could undo that, I don't know that I would. It brought so much character into my life and other things that happened, other goods, even though that was bad. Well, just because some good things came about because of some bad things doesn't mean that the bad things weren't bad or that the bad things, these bad situations and events and things that happened to you needed to happen. There are plenty of ways in which for you to have gotten those good results and I, the fact that God chooses to have people go through various types of suffering in order to bring about the good things instead of figuring out another fucking way in order for it to happen. Like, let's say one good result is that you um, have a better appreciation for life. Oh, well, do you think that maybe God could have uh, maybe changed some other things in your life to where you would come to that good conclusion without the need of whatever kind of suffering you went through? Like, uh, I, I feel like um, I feel like if God is all knowing, then that is no problem for him. The fact that people act like Christians in general act like, oh, well, I don't know if there's a better way. No, I'm not expecting you to know if there's a better way, but I'm definitely expecting the omniscient dickhead in the sky to know. And so what I'm going to say is we lack perspective as a Christian. What you, you have one tool that will help you in this. You have, well, you have multiple tools. One of them is God has a plan for the future, not just the present. And if you evaluate the present, like the current condition, like say kids getting cancer, like that's the whole story, then you just think this is ad infinitum, right? It's always going to go on this way forever. God, I, 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 uh, I can't stand that. I can't handle that. I, I reject that. I reject you. But if you realize that a new heaven and a new earth are coming, this is Christianity. Oh, okay. So let me get this straight. I feel like what he's saying now is that it's okay for children to get cancer because they're going to go to heaven. So like the good thing about children getting cancer is that they're going to die. <coughs> That's right. I'm choking on bullshit too there, hon. I feel like Mike is just kind of being covertly gross here, stating that Oh, well, it's okay because they'll die and they'll go to heaven. And apparently that's God's plan. Like God gave that kid cancer so that they can suffer and then finally die. Like instead of God snapping his, like if that was the case, if God wanted that child to come to existence for a small amount of time and then die, why wouldn't God just snap his fingers and cause that kid to die? He's so liberal with the fucking lightning bolts in the Old Testament. Why doesn't he just lightning bolt that shit? You know, like he's playing a magic the gathering game or some kind of shit like that. Like, why can't he do that and just kill a person instantly? Why, why, why does he have to give somebody the horrible disease of cancer and have them suffer and have them fight 
uh, only for them to to die. And then he is presuming that there is a new heaven and a new earth and all this other kind of shit that this person is going to be going to. If you have to presume that stuff and you don't actually know these things, which there's no way that Mike can know these things, he just sincerely believes these things. I feel like that kind of makes it a gross position to have. Got a confirmation from my colleague over there, KC, that it is in fact gross. Is uh, I feel like if we got a third person in the chat, we can make this atheist law. This is a gross fucking position. Just say gross in the side chat if you feel like this is a gross position. Quentin Van Boeven is the third. That is it. The council has spoken. If, if Christianity is true, a new heaven and a new earth are coming where righteousness dwells. Well, you will see that child that had cancer living in fuller life than they ever even would have had on earth. At what point do you have to get to in like being religious or whatever, where you are deluding yourself into thinking, oh, it's a good thing they have cancer because they're going to have a better life in heaven. I, I mean... Like, he's literally deluding himself into thinking this. It's so uncomfortable for him to think about a child getting cancer that he has to tell himself, oh, they'll be better off in heaven anyways. Like, what the fuck, Mike? You have violated Casey's gross law of 2022 a second time. You'll see them running and playing and having relationships and enjoying the best existence there could be. What fucking Bible are you reading, Mike? That's not what heaven is in the Bible. That's not what the Bible says about heaven. Heaven in the Bible is 24 seven on your knees, praising God. They're not running and playing with other children. They're having a relationship. <laughs> Uh, I guess of some sort, but they're praising God 24 seven up there in this new heaven and new earth. He's literally making this shit up. He's like going to his, this is Mike's happy place. But basically Mike is so uncomfortable thinking about children with cancer that he has to go to his happy place. He has to think about that child that had cancer is now in heaven without cancer, running and play, playing and frolicking in, in the field that's definitely not full of snakes. And uh, that's that's just where they are. And I mean, as long as you can delete yourself into thinking that, you can still praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the new heaven and new earth, and only those who want to be with God and want holiness will be there. It'll be perfect. It'll be wonderful. It'll be, it'll be holy. And it will last forever. So when you compare that eternal glory to the current suffering, even of, say, a child with cancer, it changes your perspective. Well, couldn't this work for just anybody, not with child children with cancer? I feel like this could definitely play into people that are, I, I guess, prone to depression and suicide and all this other stuff and being like, well, you know, it's just going to be so much better on the other side of this. Like, it's just going to be so much better in heaven. If you're going to devalue this life so much to where it's insignificant and, it, and it's so insignificant that not even a child with cancer could persuade you that um, that child's suffering is unwarranted, then, uh, I mean, why is any, why is anybody's life important? Like, why be pro-life in general? If people like Mike, like Christians, um, uh, specifically, at least in the United States, think that abortion is murder, abortion is killing a child, which it's not, just want to put that, it's not killing a child, but even if you thought that it did, would it not be better to just go ahead and send that kid right on to heaven where he'll be frolicking in the fields? Like, could you not use this kind of reasoning in order to, uh, you know, uh, make cogent arguments for other things that Mike would definitely disagree with? Babies can't frolic. Fetuses can't frolic neither. Like using this particular argument, you could argue for so many things that Mike wouldn't like. And uh, I feel like it's a very dangerous thing. I, I think that anytime that you're deluding yourself into thinking the best outcome for the worst situations just all the time, I feel like you're just ignoring reality. And that's what Mike is doing here. It's, it's too uncomfortable to think about children getting cancer, suffering, and then death just being the end of it as far as we know. Like, that's uncomfortable for him. So he prefers this fantastical scene of frolicking children 
former cancer patients that are just the happiest they'll ever be for eternity. I don't know if anybody has seen Interview with a Vampire, but being a child forever sucks. Kirsten Dunst got turned into a vampire when she was a child and it sucked for her. So I think I lack the wisdom. I lack the knowledge. I don't really know what's fully going on in the world. I only know the things I'm thinking about right now. I don't really have the wisdom to evaluate those things the way I probably need to. I tend to evaluate with my gut, especially when it comes to suffering. And I don't have the perspective that I will have later when I'm in his presence. And so those things to me change everything. So it, it changes everything for him to think about how much he doesn't know, but he knows enough to know that God exists and he knows enough to know that God has a good reason for giving a small baby cancer or some kind of uh, blood disease or any other kind of disease or for somebody to get graped or for any of the horrible things that happen. Apparently there's a good reason for that. I would hate, absolutely hate to hear Mike's opinion about the recent grocery store shooting or any of the other shootings or any of the unarmed people of color that have been uh, uh, basically executed by the police. I would hate to hear his opinion on it because I guarantee it would violate Casey's law of gross. Okay. It would be a gross opinion and anything on suffering coming from Mike is going to be a gross opinion. Don't let him tiptoeing around the issue. He tipped he tippy tippy toes tip tiptoeing around the issue, don't let that fool you about it. Try to read between the lines of what he's saying to what he's really saying. And what he's really saying is that there's a good reason for children to have cancer. There's a good reason for children to die. There's a good reason for these things, but only God knows them. That's how he gets around needless suffering in this reality. But I feel like deluding yourself into that position is really robbing yourself of figuring all this shit out for yourself. R remaining in ignorance of things is never the best solution. I'll add to this. Christianity has an answer to children who get cancer and terminal illness. Outside of Christianity, what on earth is your answer? Uh, okay, well, like I said at the very beginning of this response, my answer is just that suffering occurs. We are imperfect organic machines and mistakes happen because we are natural beings. We are put together naturally through natural processes and those processes are imperfect. They don't always occur perfectly every single time. Like the actual process occurs regardless. What I'm saying is, is that like, for instance, genetic mutations, they don't always operate perfectly every single time. Like it, it never comes out to be like good mutations all the time. Most are, are neutral mutations. Some are bad and uh, a, a few of them are good. But the point is that these are imperfect natural processes and the fact that children get cancer while horrible is something that happens in the world and you have to come to terms with that. You have to understand that. But I feel like understanding that that shit happens and that there's no magical wizard there to correct shit or to give you fuzzy feelings about it, it motivates people to solve those problems, to solve that suffering, to try and make sure that that suffering doesn't occur to other people. I think that that's what motivates people. Of course, you don't have to be irreligious in order to have that kind of drive. You could think that God wants you to do this. God wants you to end that particular suffering. That's perfectly fine. But what I'm specifically talking about is Mike's position of fooling yourself into thinking that there's a magical wizard out there that's allowing this stuff to happen. He could stop it. He chooses not to. And while you don't know the good reason, you know that there's a good reason for it. And it all ultimately doesn't matter because we're all going to the new heaven and the new earth anyways. I get Christians all the time that are telling me that like atheism is nihilism. That this life has no meaning to it and everything like that. Where is the meaning to life on a Christian worldview in, in this particular uh, aspect of the Christian worldview. Like, I get that there's some value to it, but I feel like that value becomes increasingly insignificant when you consider the eternity that they think is waiting in the afterlife. At what point do you say, oh, this life is basically meaningless? If you consider the eternity that exists, what value does this life have? Now, I, I'm, I'm not trying to make this argument to convince anybody that this life is meaningless. 
I find immense amount of meaning in my life. And I think everybody's life is meaningful. We're meaningful to the, pe- to the people around us. We're, we, we have value to other people, to ourselves. Uh, we value other people, our, you know, our own selves. We value other people. Uh, you know, we play important roles in our respective societies and, and friends groups and everything like that. Like, we have value in our life. But... On this particular aspect of of Christian theology, of not caring about the immense amount of suffering in this world because, oh, there's an eternity after this life where we're frolicking in the fields. I don't see the value in this life. I don't see why Christians, under this particular point of view, I don't see why Christians should um, be opposed to abortion if they think that abortion is uh, killing a child, I don't see the reason why they should uh, be opposed to it. Right, there could be millions upon millions of frolicking fetuses in heaven. I mean, they didn't even, uh, most fetuses actually, blastocysts, collection of cells, whatever, didn't even get to the point where they could even consider God or Jesus. So obviously they gotta go straight to heaven, right? There's nothing that they did. Right? Fuck you and your gross opinion, Mike. I'd love to hear what you heathens think about Mike's opinion. Do you think I'm off base with how gross his opinion is? I mean, we had multiple people, uh, you know, confirm that it was indeed gross. So uh, I believe Casey's law of gross is going to stand for the test of time here. But... Um, I'd love to hear y'all's opinion. So leave that in the comments below. Also smash that like button if you like this kind of live stream. But if you're leaving out right now, I'd really uh, appreciate it if you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of live stream. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.